Okay, in today's video, we're gonna go through a whole bunch of stuff that I have. Not a normal video for me, but I've been at my parents' house and I collected a bunch of stuff from the basement. I also like going to thrift stores and buying stuff from like Craigslist and Facebook Marketplace. So I've acquired a whole bunch of random crap and we're just gonna go through it today. I've tested a lot of this stuff off camera. I have not tested all of it. So expect some of these things to be in, in future videos where we make sure they work, clean them up, and do things like that. Behind me, as you maybe can see, there is a whole bunch of stuff. So let's get started with this, and then I'll show you the rest of the things we're working with. First thing is this cereal modem. This I found at a Savers for about, as you can see, seven bucks. This is a URS Robotics cereal modem. And then when I was looking through my parents' basement, I also found this serial modem. Same type of dealio on the back. Um, this one says 2400 BPS, and this says V92, which I'm pretty sure means 56K. So the US Robotic one clearly is faster, but I see no reason why these two modems couldn't talk to each other. It would just have to negotiate down to a slower speed so they both could communicate. These modems I have not tested since, well, I don't have a phone line or anything and it requires a bit of work to um, be able to hook these two to each other to have them talk. You can't just like connect them together with a cable. You need some other equipment in order to do that. And then as you see here are a whole bunch of CD drives. Well, except for this one. This is a DVD drive. This came from Savers. I tested this. It works. Well, I haven't tested writing or the light scribe but it can read dvds and it can read cds so that's good enough for me these two are just cd burners these are actually ide so is this one by the way ide dvd drive kind of useful ide cd burners these and these three non-burner just cd drives i got while picking some other stuff off from some guy from craigslist he had these cd drives and uh he kind of wanted to get rid of them so i just sort of took them along with all the other stuff that i got from him as well all these drives can read cds i haven't tried to write with the burners but they do work now my problem is i just have a stack of cd drives and don't know what to do with them if I build more machines, I guess I can put some drives on them, but as of right now, I'm not really sure what I'm gonna do with them, but I have them, so uh, I guess I'll keep them for now. So I went on Craigslist looking around and I found these old computer cases. This is where I got those um, CD drives from, along with these cases. The guy just had those CD drives and he just sort of threw them in as well as these things. These were both ATX cases this one is very yellow and this one actually is a little bit yellow on the top i don't know if you can see that in the camera it's yellow here but like this actually looks a little bit better i honestly don't know if i'm going to be keeping these cases because there's nothing terribly special about them they're just atx cases there's no computer inside the only thing inside each of these cases is power supply both of them have power supplies so I'll test the power supplies, and if those work, I guess I'll keep them, but I might just recycle these cases. Now you're probably wondering, why did I pick up cases? I'm just going to recycle them. Well, because the lot there was a lot of three cases, and the third case is the one that I actually wanted, whereas these two were just sort of included. I couldn't just buy the one case. I had to buy all of the cases. The case I really wanted was this guy. I need to move the camera again so you can see it. This, as you can probably tell, is an AT case. It's got a nice megahertz display on it. Turbo button, reset button, pretty satisfying power switch. This is not a floppy drive. This is just a um, little fake drive plate that looks like a floppy drive. Move this around to the back. You can see so this is indeed an AT case, and it also has an AT power supply. These are a little bit hard to come by. 
sometimes see these on eBay, but they go for crazy prices, or if they're not too expensive, they go for, you know, crazy shipping rates. So this case, the other two cases I showed you, and the stack of CD-ROM drives were all a big lot from Craigslist. I only just, I basically just wanted this, but the guy just didn't really want to give me just this one, so I took all the other things as well. I probably put, uh, put like a 386 or a 486 in here, which means I could probably use one of those CD drives in this. Luckily, hopefully this power supply will work, so I will test it out, because I don't want to have to try to find another AT power supply. Those are also fairly hard to find on eBay. You can use an ATX power supply and an adapter, but I don't know. Sometimes I just like using actual AT power supplies, so again, I will... I will test this and if it works, I will keep it. What we have here are three things that I found while cleaning out my parents' basement. Along with that modem, not the US Robotics one, the other one, I found these three. Each of these is a parallel port external drive. This one, as you can see, is a backpack brand, which I have a parallel backpack drive, but this is that's a CD drive. This is a floppy drive. Didn't actually realize they made parallel floppy drives. This could be useful to me because I have a laptop that doesn't have a floppy drive because it uses a proprietary floppy drive and I have one but it doesn't want to work so I don't know if I can boot from this but I can try. If I can't then I think I can use on that laptop like a, a compact flash card instead of a hard drive in it and just image a DOS install onto that compact flash, boot from that, and then I could probably use this floppy drive with the system, because I don't know what else I would really need a parallel port floppy drive for. This is just a parallel hard drive enclosure, though this one is interesting, as you can see, it's got these audio jacks on it, and on the front you can see this plate is removable. So this is obviously for a CD-ROM drive, I mean, I guess you could put a hard drive in here if you wanted to, but this looks to be for a CD-ROM drive that you can use over parallel. And this one is just a parallel port hard drive. It doesn't have the audio cables or a faceplate that's removable. And I don't know, I need to unscrew it to open it up, but it's a hard drive enclosure. And if I didn't show you the back of this, again, it's just parallel. And now we save the best for last. Um, these are things I found in my parents' basement. This is an IBM PS2 model 56SX. Pretty sure this is a 386. Along with that is this IBM 4869 external five and a quarter inch drive with a cable that I'm not 100% sure, but it is, it's a big, cable. There is obviously a port for it on the back of the PS2 and I think even one of the laptops that I have, I forget which laptop, I think it's a 386 or 486 laptop has the same connector. So I want to see if that will work with that as well. And then along with the IBM PS2 is, as you can maybe see, an IBM keyboard. Specifically an IBM Model M keyboard. PS2. Yes, this keyboard needs a bath. Yes, this keyboard is missing a few keycaps, but that's nothing Unicomp or whatever place on the internet can't solve. And I'll have to obviously take this keyboard apart and give it a bath, but it's still really nice to type on. This is one of the ones that has a detachable cable. Cable being right here. <laughs> There's the end that goes into the keyboard and the other end is just PS2 cable. It says IBM on it. Can't wait to clean this up and type on it. I've not tested this computer yet, nor have I even opened this computer up yet. So one fun thing I noticed about this, this computer is ah, the floppy drive that's built in, I don't know if you can see that on the button, it says 2.88. That is a 2.88 megabyte floppy disk drive. 
I forget if you can use normal 1.44 megabyte disks and format them to 2.88 megabytes, but that'd be a fun thing to test out. Well, while we're here, might as well go ahead and open this thing up. Apparently there's only one screw on the back. And how does this come off? Uh, I don't know how to open this. Does it go this way? Oh, okay. This comes out. All right, let's put this case on the ground. Have a look. Well, I guess first at the back, we have power. I'm not sure what this port is. VGA port. Um, I don't know what this port is either. Maybe a serial port, but it's missing a whole bunch of pins. Parallel port, PS2 keyboard and mouse. This bottom port here seems to be where that external floppy drive goes. This 16.4, I don't think it's a serial port. I think that's a token ring port. And above it seems to be a game port. Interesting, because this is my dad's computer, or presumably was my dad's computer. And I imagine he would have done work on it. Didn't expect him to be playing games on it, but if you put a game port card in it, then he might have been playing games on it. That's, that's fun. Should ask him what games he would have played on this thing. Another thing my dad has, but he took with him, is a compact portable. I wanted it, but he took it because he clearly wanted it. So I guess I'll let him have it. It's his, not mine. I need to get a screwdriver because one of the expansion card screws does not want to open. There we go. <laughs> Let's have a look at these expansion cards real quick while this thing is open. Here's that game port card I was talking about. It's got a game port on it. It's got some jumpers. It says game card three, copyright 1988, patent pending. Put that over here. Below it is, again, what I'm pretty sure is a token ring card. And then the big card below that It's an IBM branded card, which like I said, where the floppy drive plugs into. It's also got an internal port on it, presumably for an internal floppy drive or another drive. So clearly a drive controller. Don't know if it's just a floppy controller or what else it can do. Unfortunately, this computer looks like it's really gross. So it's gonna need a bath before I try to turn it on. Also only has one stick of RAM, so I might need to get another one. Or, you know, just some more RAM, maybe max out the um, RAM in this thing. Because I don't want to take this thing totally apart, I'm just going to hold the camera and give you a nice overview of the system. Yeah, again, you can see it's a little dirty, and you can see there's one stick of RAM and two empty RAM slots, so I'll add some more RAM to this, I guess, if I can find some. The MCA cards look to be on a little riser board with a battery on it, interestingly. I'm not sure if that is the normal CMOS battery or if that's being used for something else. That empty slot there is presumably for a 387, so I might buy one of those too and, and stick it in. I don't know if you can see it under all these cables, but right there is the i386 processor. i386 SX processor to be exact. I'm trying to read the numbers on it. it seems to be, I'm mean, gonna guess it seems to be a 20 megahertz processor. I see a dash 20 written on it. Nice, interestingly nice speaker right here. Nice big speaker. We have our floppy drive and below it we have a hard drive. I would definitely do a video more in depth on this system in the future, after I clean it up and make sure that it works. Hey, what up, guys? It's your boy Samster. Whoa, what am I doing on this channel, NTI Compass? What is that? <laughs> anyway, I'm here to tell you guys about my channel. 
you know, the better channel. <laughs> um, I do game and reviews, the Game Inspector. Game Inspector Adventures is coming back soon. Sam Search Random Blogs is coming back soon. And, you know, every so often, I talk about wrestling on the Sam Search Shoot. So check out my channel in the link below. Samster Entertainment 2. And as always, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. And I guess you could do that for this video as well. Just because I'm on it. <laughs> Alright, well, enjoy the rest of the video. But don't forget to check out my channel. In fact, you might want to just go check it out right now. Okay, there's one more thing I wanted to show you. When I was cleaning out my dad's basement and I took the um the PS2 computer. I also found these two things. This is a floppy disk holder, obviously from the Flintstones. And this is a Nickelodeon one. This is actually clamps on the discs. But these were kind of cute, so I took them. And then in this box, as you can probably read, is IBM Basic. If you open up this box, we get IBM Basic. I think this was actually for the IBM PC XT, which is not also something my dad has, but I found the IBM PC XT in the basement, but it was all gutted. It was just the case. Um, the monitor was there, the monochrome monitor. Pretty sure it's amber, but it was in a spot where that was really hard to get, and so I just didn't get it. This is a basic reference. It seems to just be how to use basic, like a list of all the functions and how to use them. Yep. Yeah, so this is the guide operations to the PC XT. So I might not have the PC XT itself, but I do have the Model F keyboard that came with it. Interestingly, in here is the diagnostic floppy disk for the Model XT. Also have DOS. I'm going to focus on that. This is Disk Operating System, or DOS. I don't know what version of DOS this is. It's got a manual for how to use different DOS commands got a floppy disk in it. I think the actual DOS floppy disks might not be here because this is just a supplemental programs disk. Um, this says supplemental programs version 2.1 so this might be DOS 2. Also in this box is some compact things. These presumably go with the compact portable, which my dad decided to keep and I don't have. An operations guide, a reference guide, and an MS-DOS 2 reference guide. So more MS-DOS 2 stuff. And another book about BASIC, IBM BASIC. More just commands, how to use BASIC, example programs. Bonus content. So, while editing this video, I realized, hey, might as well throw some other stuff into it that I also got, such as this computer, which I picked up from someone on Craigslist. This, as you can see, is a desktop computer, complete with reset, turbo, and power buttons. Now, what this actually is, this is a, um, a 486 system running Windows 3.1. Don't worry, this system will get its own video where I will open it up and go through it and we'll test it out. But the guy I got this from told me that he bought this computer for work. He said this was maybe like a $1,500 computer back when it was brand new. And he turned out to never use it because the company he worked for gave him a laptop, which he wound up using instead. So this computer kind of just sat around and never got used until he sold it off to me. So we'll be taking a look at this soon. But he also threw in a bunch of other stuff along with this computer. He just kind of gave me a whole bunch of old computer things. So let's get those up here and take a look at them. So along with that 46 desktop, he also handed me this big box of random computer stuff. I haven't even really gone through this box yet. So let's go ahead and just take a look what we got in here. It's like a bunch of motherboards and as well as a bunch of other random stuff. 
I'm gonna go ahead and put this box on the floor and just start pulling things out of it one by one. See what we got. Oh, and uh, in case you didn't notice, got a nice brand new ESD mat here. Kinda burned a hole in the other one with my soldering iron by accident. Don't ask how. So this one hopefully should be soldering iron proof. Not entirely. I mean, I could probably still burn a hole in it, but it's supposed to be a little bit more temperature resistant. So hopefully this one won't uh, get a hole burned in it. Well, what a fine collection of motherboards we have here. First one up is this motherboard that says digital on it. So that's fancy. I could have an SIS chipset and a socket seven socket but also a little bit interesting it's got these little plastic tabs on the top here so it looks like this board must have slid in to some enclosure on the bottom here it has some sort of connector here on the bottom of the board so clearly this board went inside went slid inside something i don't know what it also has usb ports on it which is a little interesting, but I guess not. I guess my other socket seven system also had USB ports on it. Well, the motherboard didn't, but it had a USB header. So USB support in these motherboards isn't too weird. I don't know if I can actually power this up. There's no, you know, AT or ATX power supply connector on it. Presumably that was provided through here. And I don't think I could just like clip on some leads and catch a power supply to it. So. Don't know if I actually make this do anything, but it's kind of cool looking. Next is this board. Seems to be socket 370, or it says PTA 370A there. Forget what type of CPU that is. I'm not looking at a, a computer right now, so I can't look that up. I'll, you know, I can look it up later. I can maybe, um, when I edit this video, write what type of CPU would, would go in this, but it looks to have what I'm guessing is an AGP socket. I'm guessing this is a universal AGP socket because it doesn't have any of the notches in it. Uh, obviously, this is for some type of Intel chip because it has an Intel chip set on it. Well, not obviously, but it's got an Intel chip set on it. And it's got Ethernet, USB, PS2, and some PCI slots. Not sure what type of board this is, but at least this has an ATX connector on it. So if I have a compatible CPU, I could, you know, try it out. Next up is this interesting motherboard. Um, see if I can get it in, in the camera here to look at all of it. Yeah, I don't know exactly what board this is. It does seem to have an ATX connector on it along with what I'm assuming is an EPS connector, but it's only six pins instead of four or eight, so I don't know. Um, it's got two, I'm assuming, CPU sockets. Is this for like a Pentium 2? Do you have two Pentium 2s in here? Or did one CPU take up both of the sockets? I don't know. I also don't know what this connector on the top is. Or what these slots are. I'm guessing these are for RAM, but what type of RAM looks like this with big notch in the middle. Like what, what is that? Um, is this, um, is this ATP or PCI X? I'm not sure. It's got, what I'm guessing are IDE ports, but they're on the edge of the board on the side. It's got this interesting notch in it, which I'm guessing was how it lined up to whatever case it was supposed to be in. I don't know what type of board this is. Also has an Intel chipset on it. So, oh, okay, no. I just noticed it says Compaq on it. So I don't know if this was from a Compaq desktop or like a, to Compaq make servers or other high-end stuff. I don't, I don't really know what type of board this is. And lastly, we have these, well, these two. This here seems to just be like a backplane of sorts with just the ice supports on it and what I'm guessing is a power connector. Don't know if that's an AT power connector or a different type of power connector. It's got 
an AT keyboard connector, I guess, and maybe an Ethernet port, maybe like an IPMI or like interface port like that, because this here is supposed to attach to that board. This has the RAM on it. It has the CPU on it, which is a A80386DX16. Okay, so it's an Intel 16 megahertz, I'm guessing, 386 with a slot there for a 387. And so this slots into this board, connects to these two guys here. Well, actually, I guess it goes this way so that the little pads line up with everything. So this slots in here, like that. And then this would go into some type of case. Again, don't know if this is a server or just a, like a workstation or something. I'm not sure, but that's how that slots in. So these are all the motherboards that were in that box. There's a whole lot of other stuff in that box. So real quick, back to that compact board. This here is a Pentium 2 that I just happen to have lying around. And I want to see if it fits into this board here. It kind of looks like a Pentium 2 socket. See, this fits. It, it does. Um, I don't know if that's supposed to go, but maybe it is. Maybe this is a Pentium 2 board. Does it need two CPUs? Or is there a special Pentium 2 that take up both slots? Um, next up is this interesting bag. And it says HP 72 DIMM. So I guess it kind of gives away what's in it. And on the side here, it seems to say NetServe LX Pro. Some of that. Um, as you can see, this is a giant bag of RAM. Let's get out all of the RAM that's in here. A lot of it seems to be tied together, so I'm guessing that means those are paired sets. It also seems to be just some loose RAM sticks in here. Good. I think that's everything. Oh, so we got. We got. RAM. Please ignore this wire. I had to plug in the camera. So we got what looks like some 30 pin 30 pin sims here. Some more 30 pin RAM. Not sure the capacity of these, but I should have some boards that use 30 pin RAM so I can see what the capacity of these are. More 30 pin RAM. Even more 30 pin RAM. And then in our random assortment of RAM here, we have look like more 30 pin RAM, some single sided 30 pin RAM, another 72 pin stick. This one's a little weird. I don't know what the notches on this one are. This is also an HP branded one. And then just some more 72 and 30 pin RAM. So moving on, in the box also these boards, some of which are expansion cards and uh, all of them have their brackets removed for some reason. For example, this here is a, um, a PCI card. It seems to just be a modem, nothing terribly fancy about it. It doesn't have the bracket on it, but this is just a PCI modem. Speaking of modems, this seems to be a serial modem, but without the case on it. This is the inside of a serial modem. Don't know if any of these cards or anything work. I don't know why they're taken apart either. Maybe he was work. Maybe the guy who gave it to me was working on something or had a project for these or something. So I don't know. So here is another modem, specifically. A compact one, also just a PCI card. Yeah, I'll put these here. This is PCI wireless card. Doesn't have the bracket on it, but it's a wireless card. This, I don't know what this is. It's got a PCI connector on it. 
but it's longer than a normal PCI connector. Here's a PCI card. Here's this one. Is this a PCI X card? You know, PCI dash X. Is that what this is? Also, not sure what type of connector this is. Is this some sort of network card? Oh, okay. That answers my question right here on the top. It says PCI X. 133. So this is in fact a PCI X card. Next we have this ISA card, which uh, I'm guessing is a SCSI controller. Is that what these connectors on the top are? Is this for SCSI? So this might be a SCSI card. Uh, or it might not be. I don't know. It's got what looks like serial and parallel on it. So maybe this is just like a uh, just a standard I.O. card that has SCSI or actually this might not be SCSI. This might just be like your standard IDE and floppy connectors just with like little clips on them. Another ISA card is this one, which has two ports on it as well. Zero and parallel, I'm assuming. And it's got some jumpers here on it that can be set for the PCAT or XT. And this is also an HP card. I think the guy who gave me all this stuff said he did actually work for HP. I think, I forget, he told me he worked for some tech company. So that would make sense where a lot of these cards came from or why he has a lot of these cards here. Interestingly, we have this, or two of them. Here's the back side of one. This seems to be some sort of like hard drive adapter. Is this SCSI actually? I'm not sure what type of hard drive connectors these are. This is, this might be a SCSI adapter or some sort of like mini hard drive adapter. Not sure, but I'm guessing, I'm guessing these are. Speaking of hard drives, we have this, which seems to be the board off of a hard drive. The hard drive is not in the box. This is just the circuit board. This is not a card, but it's also in the box. This is some sort of Ethernet transceiver. It's a 10 base 2, uh, sorry, 10 base 2 micro transceiver, IEEE 802.3. Finally is this card here. It says HP on it. This is actually still sealed in this plastic. I don't know what this is could be some RAM. It looks like RAM. It's got a bunch of RAM chips on it, but it's huge and has a very unusual connector on it. There's one more thing trapped at the bottom of that box. This is a Pentium 3. It says 1000 slash 256. So I'm guessing this is a one gigahertz Pentium 3 with 256 megabytes of cache, is, if I'm reading it right. And I think this Pentium 3 goes into the socket 370 board I saw before. Put up the socket. Line up the arrow. The arrow on the motherboard, which is where... Why am I dumb? This way. That. Yep, it fits in there. Cool. I have a motherboard with a CPU in it. I apologize for the shaky cam here, but there's one thing I got as well that I didn't feel like picking up and putting on the table. This here is a CRT monitor. A one branded digital to go with that digital motherboard, I guess. Tested this. It does work. It looks real nice. You know, it's a CRT. I almost didn't want to take it because I don't really need CRTs. Sometimes the 60 hertz CRTs can give me headaches because I can see them refreshing. And you know, they're big, they're heavy, and you know, I just use, you know, LCD panels for everything, even my old machines. But, you know, he threw this in and it's, you know, it's a digital branded CRT, so it's pretty cool. That wasn't all I was given. There's one final box of things that I was given. So the Craigslist ad just was for the 486 Windows 3.1 computer and the guy was just super cool and super nice to me and just threw in a whole bunch of other stuff for free. So we got in this box. We got 
PC power cable, a fun one because it's got a right angle connector on it. Oh. A serial mouse. Another serial mouse. A modem. A haze modem. It says V.32. 9600 baud and a haze power supply the box for the haze modem or at least part of the box that was cut out for it oh and um okay this the speedster uh yeah the sportster here us robotics this um, ISA modem is actually in the Windows 3.1 computer. That card is in that system. Here's more about that modem. And then here's about the Hayes modem. Now oh, this is fun. He gave me the receipt for that Windows 3.1 computer. look at it real quick we have I don't know if you can read this but listed here are is everything in that computer with a grand total on the bottom of seventeen hundred dollars oh okay we do have a date next here is a quote for the system dated 1998 Hmm, as we can see here, this is everything that was wanted for the computer. Next, we seem to have an ad for a monitor. This is not the monitor I have. Presumably, this is the monitor he wanted to buy with the computer, and the monitor he was probably going to use with it. I don't know where this specific monitor is because the one he gave me isn't one of these listed. Is this the ad for the computer that he purchased? It's circled here. This must have been what he saw and was like, yes, I want that computer. And they went to the store to pick it up. Look at those prices. My gosh. And then finally his little handwritten sheet here. Looks like they powered it up and wrote some information down about it, like the BIOS version and a few other things. So yeah, a Windows 3.1 486 system that cost $1,700. This is some information about the hard drive in it. So that in the BIOS of the system, you could type in the cylinders, heads, and sectors. This is an HP disk, Unix handbook. Again, yeah, I think this guy did work for HP because I got a whole lot of HP stuff. Got a copy of Microsoft Word. Optional disk, printers, learning word, learning word, more printers, utilities. Ah, we got program disk set up. I mean, another optional disk. These disks don't seem to be in any order, oddly, but they all seem to be here. So I could try this out. As you noticed, that system didn't have a floppy drive in it, but spoiler alert, I'll be adding a five and a quarter floppy drive to it, so we can try these out. Next we have Symantec, Norton Utilities, Emergency Disk, Install Disk, oh, something else here. Kermit. I've used this. 
Kermit is a terminal program, like a serial terminal program for DOS. That's super cool. Power base. Utilities and tips. It's a database software, I think, and I guess this is just how to use it. Another one. Lotus Double Up. ATM program disk. Not entirely sure what this is. Speaking of Lotus, a still sealed copy of Lotus ME Pro. Speaking of still sealed, a still sealed copy of Lotus 123. Not sure if I want to open this. Well, I guess I don't have to open that one because I have a, an open copy here of Lotus 1.2.3, a different version, ATM program. So I guess this is what that other ATM disk was. Lots of disks here for Lotus 1.2.3. And finally, this is just a normal floppy disk, but this is in the computer, the 3.1 computer when I got it. This is just like a little guide to Windows 3.1. Maybe we'll check this disk out when I do a video on that computer. So last, but certainly not least, we have two AT keyboards. First up is this HP keyboard here. It's a little dirty, but you know, another good clean can't take care of. Not mechanical or anything, you know, but not the worst to type on. Has a detachable, detachable keyboard connector there. And here's the cable for it. It's kind of, you know, kind of dirty, kind of, I'll clean it up. Here's the keyboard end connector. And here is the AT connector. Also is this AT keyboard, which has this lovely little lid on it. This one feels a bit more mechanical, or at least it's very clicky. Also dirty, but it's nice. I will clean these keyboards up. These, when he tested the computer, when I went to pick it up, he tested the computer and he showed me this keyboard. He said some of the keys sometimes stick, like you hit a key and sometimes it presses it like two or three times. So my guess is it's probably just dirty and if I clean it, it'll probably fix that. Anyway. That is all of the stuff I got on my little Craigslist adventure. So look forward to at least the Windows 3.1 computer in a future video. Again, thanks for watching and see ya.